Hey guys, VBED here with another V Plays, looking at part seven of the beginner's guide. In the last video, we covered counter error multi rolls, those that are not going to be equipped with any air to ground ordnance are in a little bit of a departure from the norm when it comes to multi roll aircraft. But I figured they needed their own video since it could probably be a little bit deceiving. The last thing I want to see is anybody shooting at ground targets with their forward firing guns on their multi, -ro multi rolls. So we're going to take a look at the F2G. The F2G is going to be a true multi-role for the most part. He is carrying a full complement of air-to-ground loadout. He has the biggest bomb in the game, a 1,600-pounder. Absolutely massive, great for blowing up large structures, as well as several rockets. Now, be aware that this is a little bit different than what you may experience on some of your multi-rolls. If you guys are running through the German multi-roll lines or some of the other Russian multi-rolls that actually have some air-to-ground ordnance, you'll find that they usually carry like a couple bombs, maybe a couple rockets, but that's really about it. So they don't have as much, and they're not able to take a whole site. And whenever you're going to, whenever you are going to attack any ground site, you want to make sure you take all of it. Because if you leave any of it behind, like at this military facility, that structure I went after, if I only damaged it, I can guarantee you that that ground attacker would have finished off the little bit that was left and stolen all the capture points for himself. So we don't want to create that situation where we're helping an enemy out. So highly suggested that if you're going to use those munitions, go after something you know you can take out. So if you're carrying two 500 pound bombs, drop a bomb on one of the air defense sites. Drop it on one of these smaller tent facilities that are easy to destroy, that are mostly light targets. That way, you don't need to worry about anybody stealing anything from you, and you're going to be helping your ground attackers out because you'll give them a bit of a head start. As a multi-role, you are going to be a jack-of-all-trades master of none. You aren't going to be really good at air-to-air -air combat, you're not going to be really good at being able to take out ground targets, and you're not very maneuverable, so you're going to have to take every opportunity that you can to get the advantage. So here's a P-51K, he came down to low altitude, he can turn on me and he can pretty much keep up with me, so I wanted to make sure I took my shots on him while I can, and you're just going to be helping out. That's what multi-rolls do. Using your pretty strong firepower to be able to damage aircraft and hurt them, so that way your allies can finish them off, or maybe just finishing off somebody who's low health. What I like to do with a lot of my multi-role fighters is prioritize taking out ground attackers because you have the guns usually to be able to do that, as well as a pretty decent hit point pool. And when you're not doing that, taking out some of the other multi-roles that might be coming in trying to do the same thing as you. And usually you can get the advantage on them if you just play tactfully against them. Now, these turn and burn fighters down at low altitude, they are going to be a pain for you to engage because once they decide that they're going to turn on you, it's going to be a serious problem. But what you're going to do is much like you do with a heavy fighter. When that nimble fighter tries to turn and get you into a turn and burn engagement, you're not going to fight him in that fight because that's what he does. So use your engine power and speed to be able to get away from the engagement and then come back when you're ready to come back back and you can get the guns around on them so that way you can go for another head-on pass and that's where your advantage really lies because a turn and burn fighter is typically pretty slow by comparison to all the other aircraft at that tier. Now the real bane to your existence is going to be aircraft like this 109G. The 109G is an altitude fighter. He really isn't supposed to be down here and your turn and burn fighter should be able to punish him pretty easily but it's not always going to work out exactly like that, right? You might have your turn and burns engaged, you might not be anybody left, you might be by yourself. So the problem is, is you can't outrun those aircraft, but <clears throat> you can theoretically keep them at arm's length and try to draw them towards allies. That's really going to be your best bet. Because when you can't get away from them, the best the best thing you can do is have somebody come and give you a hand. So a multi-role also likes to fight in the thick of it. By fighting in the thick of it, you're always going to be aiding your allies, you're always going to have someone to get your back, and keep the enemy distracted. When it's just two aircraft, it's pretty easy for them to get on you. So here's a prime example of me 
getting out of the fight. However, the aircraft that's currently chasing me is going to be a P-51K, I believe. No, it's P-51D. Either way, it's going to be an altitude fighter operating at high speed, and he's on my tail. So rather than staying in that engagement and letting him get on me, I am trying to keep him at arm's length, and I am drawing him into the AAA fire of this site, as well as bringing him to the air defense fighters so that way they can punish him. And there they are, engaging him, and I'm going to flip around and attack. Now, by default, if you hit the E key, you should be able to look behind you, and that will allow you to be able to see what's coming at you, opposed to having to hold down the right mouse button in order to get your free camera view. We've already gotten near superiority, and a lot of that was because we were spending most of our time over the missile base defending it. Like we mentioned in part five, or part six, rather, you get a lot of points from defending a site. Let's take a look at the post-game stats. All right, here we are at the post-game results screen. As you can see, we fared pretty well. We ended up getting rank one on the team, which isn't surprising since there was only two players per side. And we were able to take the center objective right at the very beginning of the match. Now, this isn't going to be the same for all multi-role fighters. Most multi-role fighters carrying a limited air-to-ground loadout are mostly going to be going after some of the air defense sites in order to make things a little bit easier for their ground attackers who are going to come in and mop up the rest of the zone or their bombers to knock out those sites. And if you have enough multi-role fighters, you might be able to flip a site just purely on ground attack, but you're really here to do both because you are a multi-role. So in this instance, we are a little bit ground attack heavy with an F2G being able to carry the largest bomb in the game and then also eight five-inch rockets. And that will be the same case if you're looking at the American multi-role line that leads to the Thunder Streak, which carries quite a few rockets as well as air-to-ground bombs. Not like there's any other kind of bomb, but you're getting my point here that there's only a few instances where you would go after the bigger structures. For the most part, you're going to go off, go after the structures that are on the periphery, the air defense sites, as well as some of maybe the tent facilities or the lightly armored ones, and just using your limited air-to-ground ordnance to be able to augment your capability, and that'll give you a little bit more capture points, and then you can direct yourself upwards and start looking for aircraft to take out, possibly taking out some of the ground attackers that are going to be rolling in with your most likely pretty strong air-to-air ordnance. As you can see here for the capture points received, I mentioned this on the counter air variant of the multi-roll, which I did in a part six, I believe. No, it was, yeah, it was part six. Uh, you see here that you're looking at the ability to kill enemy aircraft, defense aircraft, and ground targets. So this is where multi-rolls really shine, is they're gonna also be getting points towards their badge which is the there it is the grade four multi-role fighter badge here in this instance and giving you the ability to augment your point score now you're also going to get points for capturing sectors once you're able to take the whole site and then just defending air defending against incoming aircraft what i found works really well for multi-role fighters is going after other multi-rolls that are coming into your zone and going after ground attackers. That's really going to be where your bread and butter is. You can go after an actual fighter, some of the turn and burns, but I think you'll find that you're going to have a tough time really brawling with them because you're most likely going to have a very long turn time, which means that you're going to have a lot of difficulty being able to engage them on what's essentially their terms. So I like to use the usually pretty strong engine power that comes with the multi-role fighters and getting out of the engagement and that way I can come back and re-engage those light fighters that may be trying to come after me. In a lot of instances, I found myself target switching quite a bit, so you'll end up getting quite a few assists if you're going to follow this tactic, and that seems to work well for me. 
all in all, that's the general that's the generalities for a multi-role fighter. Is you're going to be in that mid to low altitude bracket, so you're going to have to be contending with the GAs. You're going to have to contend with the other multi-roles in the turn and burn. So just plan accordingly and know what you're going up against, so that way you can try and counter them to the best of your ability. The thing about a multi-role fighter, particularly the air-to-ground ones, you're a jack of all trade, master of none. So you never want to engage anybody on equal terms. You want to make sure that you're using your strengths to your advantage against the enemy otherwise you're going to find yourself having a really tough go at it and there's a lot of people who started going down the multi-role lines that ended up hating it because they couldn't turn with the other fighters that they were engaging and that makes sense because that's not what they're really built for but it's hard for people to get past that since everybody starts the game in light fighters low altitude biplanes that are just doing tourney fights and now you get to these kind of unique airframes that start to develop a niche and how they behave and and that's why i'm kind of doing these videos is to get you guys past that point so that way you can realize what these aircraft can do and where they can really shine and i've actually really enjoyed going down the corsair line and i plan on keeping the f2g just because it's such an interesting airframe for me and it carries the biggest bomb in the game for my equipment slots this is going to be very similar to what we saw with most of my other aircraft that are going to be primarily air to air uh, improved radiator to get that boost back because you have a long boost when it comes to these type of aircraft and then also engine tuning so you can get the best bang for your buck out of that boost because you're already going to get more thrust from every second of boost that you have available to keep you at that top speed and then some type of an aiming module in order to increase my accuracy because that's what i do when i run a cannon fighter and this is just that your mileage may vary <clears throat> for the xp72 for example it is a machine gun setup so i actually swapped out gyroscopic sight for the ordnance site is that what it's called yeah the ordnance delivery site i'm trying it out it seems to be doing well for me since i want to make sure that those rockets are going where they're supposed to but i may change my mind in the future and we'll talk more about that as i start to get used to the xp72 and decide if that's the best setup for it but generally, that's the setup that I would run with most of my multi-role fighters. When it comes to skills, uh, if it's a cannon aircraft, I am always going to optimize Marksman 2. However, if you are running a machine gun aircraft, I would probably prioritize Engine Guru 1 and 2 in order to give you more strength to your already strong capability of acceleration and being able to disengage from the turn and burn fighters. If you find yourself up against any of the heavy fighters, you should be able to turn on them, but the real bane of your existence is going to be those high altitude fighters that are going to drop down to your altitude because they'll be able to maintain chase and they'll also be able to outturn you, so you just got to be wary of when you get into those engagements which is what happened er later in that engagement that last battle where the p-51 was chasing me across the map he was not meant to be at that altitude so i tried to drag him in towards a friendly zone so that way he'd be distracted by the defense aircraft so i could turn the tables on him but that pretty much wraps it up for the true multi-rolls if you would the air to ground variants and i hope you guys enjoyed the video as always, like, favorite, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.